2012 through 2018 Audi A6 with the supercharged engine. We're going to be replacing the front brake pads, rotors, and sensors. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive, and I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of doing that. First thing you're going to want to do is come under the hood here and uh, pop up this little plastic cover here, and we're going to suck out a few ounces of uh, fluid. So there is a little cover in the back you can pop up, or you can pull this little molding back here and lift the uh, whole plastic piece up right here. And then we're going to take the cap off and just suck out one or two ounces. I like to use a turkey baster to do this. I'll explain why we're doing this a little bit later. So now you need to get the front of the vehicle up in the air and support it with floor jacks and jack stands if you're doing this at home. And we need to take these little plastic caps off. So these little plastic caps here have a special tool to take them off. They're usually found in the, uh, in the kit with the uh, spare tires located. So after removing the caps, we're going to remove the wheels. I like to use these special sockets here with this nylon sleeve over it. It helps prevent the, um, the wheels from getting damaged from the sockets. Especially working on these high-end cars, you know, you don't want to damage those. So after you remove all the uh, lug nuts, the wheels most likely not going to want to just come off. They like to they get stuck on the hubs on them. They're really tight fitting on the hubs. So I screw in this pilot tool here like this. So I will link up all these tools in the description of the video. So once you install the pilot tool, we're going to work on getting this wheel off. The way I do it is I get a rubber mallet and I tap the back of the tire from the rear and that stud tool is going to keep the rim and tire from falling off onto the ground. Once you got it knocked free, you can go ahead and pull it off and set it aside. I wanted to share with you the parts that I'm going to be using on this uh, repair. I'll be sure to link up all the parts and the tools that I'm using in this video in the description. That way, if you guys need to pick up any of those, you can find those links in the description. So in this particular vehicle, the owner uh, likes to drive it on a racetrack and, and drive it really hard. And as you can see, the evidence of the tires here are slick. And uh, these brake pads are really thick, but he has warped the rotors. This particular model is a 2017 with only like 10,000 miles on the car. So I'm going to be demonstrating the passenger side. And the first thing we need to do is get this T40 bolt here off. And we're going to take this rattle clip here off. It's kind of like holds spring pressure on the uh, caliper here. So we, I'm using a torque T40 torque socket and my little impact gun to remove the uh, bolt. Once you get the bolt removed, this little cover is going to come off. Now the bigger rattle clip here behind it is going to be held on. It's kind of hooked into a little groove on the caliper. And uh, what we're going to use is a flatbed screwdriver and kind of pry it right here. And it may come out with some pressure and fly off. So you're going to be aware of that. So once you got that little clip off, what I like to do is go back in the car and uh, turn the ignition switch on and uh, turn the wheel. That way the brake caliper is facing outwards and we got access to all the bolts. Once you have the steering wheel turned to the position you like, I recommend that you turn the ignition switch off. Now we're gonna work on getting the caliper off. I use a little flat blade screwdriver. I put it between the caliper mounting bracket and the caliper itself like this, and I pry it over just a little bit like this. And I'll do this on top and the bottom to get the pistons to push in just a little bit. The reason why we're doing that is because a lip develops on the uh, on the rotor and the when you go to pull the uh, bolt out and pull the caliper off it won't come off because of the lip that's on the rotor now that we push the pistons in just a little bit we can go on the back side of the caliper here and there's these little plastic caps we need to remove those i just use a little plastic screwdriver to pop these caps out there's one on the bottom here and then one slightly just a little further up once you get the two caps off, these are dust caps to prevent dirt and stuff getting into the slide pins on the caliper bolts. Now we can go ahead and unplug the, the brake wear lining sensor here. So you can unhook it from the little catch on the side of the caliper. And then right here, there's a little tab. So you're going to slightly flare it and then you're going to twist it counterclockwise like this. And then once you get it twisted counterclockwise, you can push downwards and it'll come out of the little, little mounting bracket here. Then you can squeeze the tab and pull the connector apart. Now that we got the wear sensor unplugged, we need to get the bolts out, the slide pin bolts here. These are 9mm, so you're going to need a 9mm Allen socket. So I'm using a 9mm Allen socket, and I'm using my Milwaukee uh, cordless ratchet here to make quick work of that. And remove these two pins. So you'll remove top and bottom, and then you're going to set these aside, and we're going to do some maintenance on these in a little bit. Now you can take the caliper and we can go ahead and remove it from the uh, bracket here. So you're going to lift it straight outwards. And once you get the caliper off, then what I like to do is I like to set it on top of the, uh, the rotor here, on top of the backing plate. Just kind of rest it up here and try not to let it rest from the brake hose. 
Now we're going to take the caliper cage bolts off. These are 21 millimeters. I'm using an impact gun here for wobbly socket to get these off and make quick work of this. You can use regular hand tools to do this job, but just having tools like this makes it much easier. I will link these tools all up in the description of the video. Now that the bracket's removed, we're going to remove the rotor. I recommend you screw a lug nut in, and we're going to remove this T30 Torx uh, set screw here. So go ahead and remove this screw, and a lot of times the rotor will be stuck to the back to the backing plate. So I use a hammer and tap it from the back, and the lug nut will keep it from flying off. And uh, I'm not reusing these rotors and replacing the rotors, so I'm not worried about damaging the rotors. If so now that it's loose, you can go ahead and remove the lug nut and go ahead and remove the rotor. So now this hub here, if it's uh, in bad shape or really rusty, you can use a wire brush or a roll lock disc or whatever and clean that up. Make sure it's nice and smooth. So now we're going to prep the uh, brake caliper. And the way I do that is I use a C-clamp and I hook it on the back of the caliper on the pad here. And I pull the pistons back inwards. I'm also inspecting the pistons on the brake caliper, making sure it's in good shape. And once I get the pistons pushed in, then I go ahead and remove the uh, the pads by just pulling them off. They have these little clips on the back of the pads that kind of hold them on into place. So you have to just push them with your thumb like this to push them through to pop them out. If you notice on the back of the pads here, the clips are different for the in, for the side with the piston and the side of the out, outer side. So you want to keep that in mind. So now what we're going to do is I use a little bit of Seal Glide brake caliper grease. And I like to apply a thin layer on the back of the, uh, of the pads. This helps reduce vibrations and squeaks. Now on the brake calipers here, they have these little rubber bushings here. We can apply a little bit of that grease on there. We're going to inspect the pistons. We're going to inspect these bushings to make sure they're not worn out. If everything's in good shape and does not need to be replaced, then you can lubricate the bushings. I like to put a thin layer in there. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit to help the pins slide back and forth on the caliper. And you put them on both sides of the bushings. Now you're going to put the cal the brake pads back into the caliper. So you're going to put the one with the longer studs. Uh, they go into the piston side. So you'll line it up. And you may have to reach around the back and squeeze these little tabs. I had to do it for a pair of pliers like this. Just a little squeeze to get them to go inside the pistons. And then push them in with my thumbs. And then once you get them fully seated, then you can go ahead and put the outer pad on. So I, I took the outer pad. I lined it up with, on the bottom on the hook. And then I reached over the top and kind of pushed it in. So once you get both brake pads installed onto the caliper we're just going to go ahead and flip this back up over here and now we're going to install the rotor so the new rotor comes with this coating on it that uh, you don't remove that so don't wash it off and then you can go ahead and put the uh, rotor on and re-secure the, th uh, the set screw now the caliper mounting bracket here we're going to clean this up with a wire brush and we're going to inspect everything to make sure that there's no uh, no divots or anything in it if it's uh, if it's in bad shape I recommend replacing it if yours is in good shape and you can reuse it, then I would recommend putting a thin layer of this uh, brake caliper grease on the um, on the slides here. You definitely don't want to put too much. If you put too much, it just collects dirt and dust and it actually causes problems. So after that, I like to put a little bit of thread locker on the bolt holes here. So this helps prevent these bolts from vibrating loose and coming back off. So I put a small little dab on the thread holes. Now I mount it back up and then we uh, torque this down to... 196 newton meters or which is around 144 foot pounds now we can take the caliper and slip it back over the rotor when we're doing this you want to make sure that the brake hose does not get twisted in any way now we're going to resecure the slide pin bolts you want to make sure these are clean and free of dirt and debris and then go ahead and slide those back into place and we can go ahead and torque these down to 40 newton meters or 29 foot pounds once you got both top and bottom slide pins mounted and, and retorqued down we can go ahead and take those two plastic caps and we're going to go ahead and reinstall those so you just press them into place now we're going to reinstall this clip here it mounts here and here on the back of the uh, caliper so these little ears will mount there so you'll put put it on just like this and once you get it lined up then you're just going to use your thumbs and you're going to push it inwards and so you'll push it inwards until the bolt hole lines up with the uh, hole on the bracket there so with one thumb, I push towards the back of the caliper, and then once I got it over the bolt hole, then I use the other thumb to push inwards. Now we can take this little plate that went over the top here, and then we can go ahead and remount the, uh, the screw and tighten that up. Now we're going to reinstall the brake wear sensor here. It just presses into the pad, and then you're going to push the electrical connector together and remount it onto the, uh, the bracket up above. That mounting tab will be sideways and you push it up and then you rotate it clockwise until it clicks into place. Then you can secure the wire into the clips right here. 
Now I'm going to install my wheel alignment uh, tool here and, um, and slide the wheel on. So the torque specs for the wheels range from 120 to 140 newton meters, which is roughly 90 to 105 foot pounds of torque. Go ahead and torque these wheels down. Now this next step is important that you take the brake pedal here and slowly press it five or six times to get the fluid from the calipers pushed back up into the master cylinder. And that's why we removed a few ounces earlier when we pushed the pistons in on the calipers. And at any time somebody topped off the master cylinder, when we press these back in, the brake fluid could overflow the master cylinder spilling into the bay. That's the reason why we removed a couple ounces. So we want to make sure that you got a firm pedal. If you do not have a firm pedal, then I would recommend that you bleed the system, but you should have a firm pedal. Now we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle up. And if there's any maintenance lights on the dash, if It'll require a scan tool to reset that. All scan tools are different on how they do that, so I would recommend you just follow the prompts on your scan tool. The very last step would be to double check the brake fluid in the master cylinder. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick up any of those, you can find those there. People ask me all the time, how can they support the channel? Well, now I have merchandise selling t-shirts and stickers. There will be a link for that in the description also. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.